Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin Lecture in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video we're going to learn how to calculate students' t-statistics when we have unequal variance on unpaired or independent data. And we're going to learn how to do this by hand. So before we start, let's take a look at some sample data. Here I have uh, the results of two treatments, treatment X, and I've got 19 values listed here, and treatment Y, I've got 17 values listed here. These data are not paired, and we can see we have unequal sample sizes. Therefore, the most appropriate test is an independent or unpaired t-test to compare the means of these two samples so that we can make an inference about the population of X and the population of Y. Now, in order to conduct students' t-test, we need, first of all, to calculate a lot of descriptive statistics. Now, in earlier videos, I've shown you how to do these, so um, I'm going to jump very, very quickly through all of these here. I need to calculate, first of all, the number n in each sample, so that's 19 and 17, we've already mentioned that. We need to calculate the mean, so that means uh, adding up these 19 values and dividing by 19, and that gives us a, a mean of 16.81 for sample x. And similarly, the mean for sample y is 19.39. Now you can see there is a little bit of a difference between the means here, but is that a significant difference? And that's what our test is going to be. In order to calculate the variance, so we do the variance for sample x first. So the formula for that is the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1. So to get x minus x bar squared, this column here shows me how I've done all of that. I've calculated these previously, and that gives me a sum of 387.54. So that's where this value here in this formula comes from. Divided by n minus 1, which is 19 minus 1, gives us 18. And that results then in a variance of sample uh, treatment x of 21.53. Very quickly, the variance for sample y, or treatment y, is this time y minus y bar squared. So I've got the sum of all of those here. It gives me a value of 825.54. So I put that into my formula, divide by m minus 1, which is 17 minus 1 in this case, giving us 16. And that then gives us a variance of 51.6. Now you can see there's quite a considerable difference between the variances here. But is this a significant difference to tell us that it, the variance is, in fact, unequal? So the simplest calculation for that is to calculate an f statistic for variance, where we divide the highest variance by the lowest. So that's 51.6 divided by 21.53. That gives us a result of 2.40. When we go to our f distribution tables to determine the critical value for a test of this size, we critical value is 2.25. We can see that our f statistic is greater than our critical value. So this f stat is greater than the critical value. And therefore, we assume unequal variance. Now that's important because uh, when we look at the formulas that you would use in a t-test, uh, there are a few of them. We first of all have to determine, we're, we're testing for two samples, comparing two samples. So we first of all got to determine whether they're unpaired or paired. Now we've already determined that our, in our case here, the data are unpaired. But as you can see, uh, there's considerable difference as to whether the variance is equal or unequal. So uh, we have just determined that our variances are unequal here, so which means we need to use this t-formula over here to calculate our t-statistic. Um, but very importantly, uh, we've been using this quite complex formula here to, to calculate the degrees of freedom for this test. We're now ready to do our t-test. So as it is a statistical test, we first of all set out our null and I alternative hypothesis. So I'm going to do that up here at the top. My h0 is that the population mean for x is the same as the population mean for y. In other words, there's no difference between the two population means. And my alternate or research hypothesis is that the mean of x is not equal to the mean of y. Of y. Well, x bar is not equal to y bar. I'm going to use an alpha value of 0 0.05, a good standard value to use. And I'm not indicating a direction with this test here, so this tells us that this is a two-tailed test. Okay. So, in order to conduct this, we're going to need a summary of our descriptive statistics. So I'm going to put those in this column here. n1 is equal to 19. n2 is equal to 17. The mean of x is equal to 16.81. The mean of y is equal to 19.39. I'm going to pull up the two variances as well. So s squared for x is equal to 21.53 and s squared for y is equal to 51.60. So all of these figures here are taken from our calculations down here in the bottom for our descriptive statistics. So now we, let's do the t formula. So our t statistic is equal to the difference between the means, so that's x bar minus y bar, divided by the square root 
of, and just put some brackets in here, the variance s squared for x divided by n1 plus the variance s squared for y divided by n2, closing bracket. Now this looks like an awkward formula, but if you, first of all, if you consider it on the top line here, we are uh, the, we're taking account of the difference between the means. On the second line here and underneath the square root sign, we're taking account of the variance of the data. And in the third and last line here, we're taking account of sample size. So we're not just comparing the means. Now the good news is, that even though this looks like quite an awkward formula, we actually have, there are six components to this formula, we have those six over here. So let's fill them in. So first of all, at the top, the mean of x is 16.81, minus the mean of y, which is 19.39. Okay, so that's the top part, divided by the square root of my variance for uh, x, which is 21.53, divided by n1, which is 19, plus 51.60, which is the variance of y, divided by n2, which is 17, closing closing bracket in there. So I now just plug these values into this formula to give us this over here. So let's uh, work that out. So let's uh, get a calculator over and start doing some calculations for our t-test. Let me do the top part over here first. So 16.81 minus 19.39. That gives us a value for the numerator here of minus 2.58. And we're going to divide that by, I'm going to keep the square root for the moment, going to divide that by uh, 21.53 divided by 19. So uh, let me do that calculation here. 21.53 divided by 19. That's equal to 1.13 rounded. So I'm just going to round to two decimal places here. Plus 51.6 divided by 17. So 51.6 divided by 17 gives me 3.04 rounded. When I work those out again, a minus 2.58, I'll keep that, divided by um, the square root of these two numbers. So um, let me just um, add 1.13 plus 3.04 equal to 4.17. Take the square root of that, and that's 2.04 rounded, 2.04 rounded. Uh, so let me do the final calculation here. So my t then is going to be equal to minus 2.58 divided by 2.04 that gives us a t statistic of minus 1.26 so there's our test statistic calculated there so now that we have a test statistic we can uh, start to think about looking up um, the t tables to determine whether this statistic represents a significant value or not across the top here i've got the figures for a one and two tail test so we've got a two tail test we're testing at 0 0.05 so that means then that the critical value is going to be somewhere in this column here and in order to determine which row it's on i need to determine down along here the left hand side what the degrees of freedom are for my test here so the formula for the degrees of freedom is qu quite a complicated formula but let's write it out first so the degrees of freedom is equal to uh, in brackets here on the top, the s squared for x, variance for x, which we've already calculated, divided by n1, which we know, plus the s squared for y, divided by n2, and that value then is get squared when you add those together, divided by, and just watch out for precedence and everything in all of these things here, so s squared for x, divided by n1, and that gets squared, and then we divide that, the result of that, by n1 minus 1, plus and in brackets again, s y for squared for y divided by n2, and we'll square that value, and then divide that by n2 minus 1. Now that can look a little bit daunting and a little bit awkward, but uh, when you look at it very, very closely, you'll see that you have many of these calculations already worked out. So we've already done, for example, um, the variance for x divided by n1. We can see um, that that is actually, we've done it over here, 21.53 divided by 19, so that's 1.13. The same for the variance for y divided by n2, that turns out to be 3.04. So let's fill in the values that we've already calculated for each of these components here. So uh, this is going to be equal to, on the top, 1.13 plus 3.04 squared divided by uh, 1.13 squared divided by n minus 1, which is 18, plus 3.04 
squared divided by n minus 1 for sample 2, which is 17 minus 1, gives us 16. So when we work um, all of that out, so let's go ahead and do, and do that now. So 1.13 1 plus 3.04 and square that gives us a value of 17.39. So that's this bit here in the top divided by, so let's work out uh, each of these individually first. So 1.13, and I'm going to square that and divide by 18. That's 0 0.07. Plus, on our last calculation that we have to do from this formula here is 3.04 squared divided by 16 which is equal to 0 0.58 rounded. And the result of that then is when we divide 17.39, divide that by 0 0.07 plus uh, 0.58, do that in my head, that's 0 0.65. So 0 0.65 is equal to 26.75. And I'm going to round that up to 27. So our degrees of freedom for this test here is 27. That means then I can go back to my statistical tables. I'm going to go down the column for 0 0.05 for a two-tailed test and I'm going to look up the line which has 27 degrees of freedom and where they meet here, where they cross over, is a critical value and that is a value of 2.052. So my t crit is equal to 2.052. My t stat is equal to minus 1.26. So if I look at the distribution of this here, very quickly, draw a distribution, t distribution with my mu in the center here. I got my right tail over here on my left tail. So we've got a minus value here. So we've got a minus value of 1.26. So that means our critical value here, our t crit, is equal to minus 2.052. And we can tell here, uh, I'm going to use a different color pen for this, that our uh, t stat is going to fall around here somewhere. That's minus 1.26. That's t stat. So that does not fall into the reject region. Therefore, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So let's report our t value for 27 degrees of freedom is equal to minus 1.26. Uh, our probability here, when we want to write this over, it's greater than 0 0.05. And um, so our result here is that our t stat is less than our t crit. So and therefore, we accept or we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So that tells us then, when we look at our value here, is that uh, our null hypothesis was that there was no difference between the population means. Our t statistic and our calculations here reveal that this is uh, can be accepted, it cannot be rejected. Therefore, our conclusion is, is that there is no difference between treatment x and treatment y in these data here. So that's how you calculate manually a t-statistic for uh, unpaired independent data when variance is unequal. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.